This is um, the chapter from How to Church Chess from William Hartston, International Master from UK or England. And this is Test Yourself out of his book, uh, How to Cheat at Chess. And so it's called Chapter 16, Test Yourself! Exclamation mark. Now I'm just going to put my lovely pink reading glasses on. This final chapter gives the reader a chance to see how much he has learnt from this book. Notice it says he. Now it would say he, she or the person. He will already have discovered that there is more to chess mastery than he had perhaps previously thought. Okay, and he will doubtless have identified in himself some of those characteristic qualities which contribute to success over the chessboard. Answer the following questions honestly and in brackets or in parentheses, well, reasonably honestly, or comma, as honestly as possible if you cannot if you cannot manage that and see how you rate as a potential grand master a grand master a grand master of chess so here we go number one okay and i'm going to give the answer to the questions thereby um chronologically with the um the question sort of thing so if you understand what i'm trying to say number one you have picked up a piece oops but suddenly you realize that the intended move loses immediately. The laws of chess, of course, insist that the touch piece be moved. Do you? Colon. Not semicolon. A. Shake the piece vehemently, wildly around above your head, shouting vehemently, Damn wasps! Get everywhere! Damn wasps! Ah, go away wasps! Before returning it to its original square, or better square if you can find it, and moving and moving something else. B. Complete the intended move with a great flourish, bang the piece down and slam the clock and off a draw. C. Put the piece back where it came from and move something else. Relying on your opponent's sense of decency not to complain and being prepared to deny on oath ever having seen the piece, let alone touched it. D. This is a good one. Absently mind, absent mindedly stir your tea with the offending piece before lapsing back into deep thought. That's a good one, isn't it? And the answer is, it's a quiz, eh? The answer is, now work out your score, adding one bonus point if at any stage you sneak to look at the answers we are to determine the most valuable response. A is two points. Shake the piece vehemently, all of that sort of thing. B is naught, C is one, and D is three. But only score C if the opponent is considerably smaller than you and D only merits two points if the T is still hot. Number two. You are due to play a formidable opponent the following afternoon. Your pre <laughs> this is good. Your pre-game strategy is A. Ply him with bars of laxative chocolate disguised in innocent wrappers. B, that reminds me of um, Dumb and Dumber. B, ensure that the telephone service gives them an early morning call around 4.30 and that the hotel provides them with a full English breakfast and all the morning papers at 6am. C, this is really good. Very, very funny, William Hartston. Number C. Arrange for a telegram to be delivered after about half an hour's play, telling him the bad news 
that the hill on which his house stands has just betrayed its true existence as an active volcano by erupting. Check that his insurance does not cover volcanoes. And the answer is... Number two is... A is three, which is um, laxative of chocolate. Um, B is one, and C is two. Experiments have proved that laxatives are far more reliable than either hotel porters or the post office. Isn't it brilliant? And so the next one is, is number three. Your opponent has just played a move in the opening with which you are unfamiliar with. Do you, A, reply immediately to disguise your deficient knowledge? B, scrutinise the expressions on the faces of any grandmasters watching to discover what they think of his move? Or C, apply a sensible reply and slink off towards the tournament bookstall to see what knowledge can be gleaned from its library resources and then this is really not very good off d off a drawer well can't really be off a drawer can it so a is naught which is um play a sensible reply disguising your so you get no points for a b you get two points for by looking at grandmasters what they think and scrutinise in there. C, you get naught. Four, you get nothing for that. And D, you get one for off a drawer, which I, th I think that was the worst of the four options. Um, the enterprising nature of C, which is um, offered him a drawer. Uh, no, no, play a sensible reply. Is in practice too dangerous. Bookstall proprietors get so s suspicious nowadays. That was then, back in the 70s. Now, um, you you get they get suspicious if you're um, checking behind the toilet cylinder for your hidden away um, apparatus and that sort of thing. And that's actually happening in, uh, in real tournaments, real big international tournaments. And so cheating's really rife. So, um, anyway, number four. Your, po your, your opponent's hand is poised to deliver the moves you fear. Do you, A, <coughs> burst into a fit of coughing, <laughs> um, B, offer him an extra strong mint, C, offer him a draw, D, spill your tea in his lap. A is one, which is coughing. You've heard that. B is two, strong mint. C is naught, offer him a draw. It's pretty pathetic. Because you probably can't really offer a draw at that time. And But D gets the most points, uh, spilling your tea in his lap. A highly effective and well worth worth the tea wasted. You've just won number five, the luckiest victory of your career. You were totally outplayed. Oh, that's just a word for my sponsor. Okay, I'll go. Okay, that's just I'm just doing some recording. You've just won the luckiest victory of your career. You were totally outplayed until your opponent, perhaps upset, upset by the scalding tea dripping from his knees, made several grotesque mistakes, missed several ways to checkmate you, and eventually lost on time in an equal position. Funny how his side of the clock went faster than, seemed to go faster, much faster than yours. Your comment to the press after the game is the, either one of the following. A. I did not deserve to win at all. It was pure luck. B. He put up a brave fight, but was never really in with a chance the better man won. C. 
I would have won a lot quicker had it not been for an appalling headache. And so A deduct one point, which is um, didn't deserve to win old chap. Didn't deserve to win old chap. And uh, B take two points. He put up a brave fight. And C one your public uh, C is only one where you're saying oh, about the headache. Um, I your public image is of great importance in demoralising future opposition. This consideration far outweighs old-fashioned concepts such as mere factual accuracy. Number six. While arranging the conditions for your world title challenge match, the champion insists on a board with green and yellow squares. Your reaction is either A. Passive acquiescence. B. Immediately suggest a compromise. Green and yellow on his half of the board. Black and white on your half. Of course. We have to have it black and white. C. I rather fancy lilac and tartan myself, ducky. So the answers to number six are A is naught, which is again uh, passive acquiescence. B is naught. Um, B B is two, sorry. B is two, immediately suggest compromise. And C, uh, C is one. Has A has already been tried and failed. Lilac cis out this month. Lilac cis. Lilac is, oh, sorry. Um, so A, so slur. Yeah, uh, C is about the um, lilac and tartan. Seven, in a complicated position, which you thought was you were losing, your opponent suddenly offers you a draw. Do you A, instantly accept before he changes his mind, which he's not allowed to do anyway in chess, once he's offered a draw, or she, or it, the computer. So accept instantly before he, she, it changes its mind. A. So B. Refuse instantly on the grounds that he must think he is losing too. C. Adjourn to the toilet to analyse the situation properly on a pocket chess set. And the answer is to 7 is A for 1 point. A is one point, accept instantly. B is nothing, uh, refuse instantly. C is um, a journey to the said, said room to analyse it on pocket chess set. If God had not meant us to analyse in the toilet, he would hardly have provided paper on which to write notes on same. Okay, number eight. Your opponent's swivel chair squeaks. Okay, now this is um, something that Boris Spassky thought was going on with Bobby Fisher's chair. He thought there was something fu funny or fishy or fly about his chair. And, and it was discovered that there was, um, or it was the light or something like that. And there was also the chair was analysed and under scrutiny and under microscopic um, machines back then to, to see what was going on. So we, um, A, you refuse to continue play until the chair is dismantled and examined for electronic devices. Now I think there were flies caught, there were dead flies or something in the actual lights and they they were sort of probably burning <laughs> i don't know and and then there was also the chair was found they thought that um bobby's um chair was uh emitting some sort of like signal or something or whatever other paranoia because often chess players especially myself can um, relate to the word paranoia um so anyway 
um, refused to continue play until the chair is dismantled and examined for electronic devices. I wonder what that was playing on. B. Take an oil can from your pocket, spraying its contents liberally, liberally over the offending piece of furniture and your opponent. <laughs> and C. Start humming the slow movement of Shost Shostakovich's first cello concerto. Okay. Now, we've got A is 1, which is refuse to continue play. B is the oil can, and C is Shostakovich. Now, actually, funnily enough, A is only one point um, for um, the a la uh, Boris Spassky um, deliberation over the said chair. Um, B is two, which is the oil can spilling it all over your opponent, but C um, Shostakovich's um, cello concerto, having the presence of mind to be carrying an oil can is indeed mer meritorious, but the ability to hum the Shostakovich deserves three points. Now we have some other um, questions here still. Which of the following statements Which of the following statements comes closest to describing why you gain enjoyment from chess? A. It is a stimulating year, year, intellectual year, pastime in which two minds join together in friendly, whatever that means, with inverted commas around the word friendly, rivalry to produce an occasion, a minor, on occasion, a minor work of art, thus de demonstrating that mankind has come to terms with the reality of human conflict and demonstrating blah, 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 our superiority over less life forms other than computers. Okay, or over less life forms. B, I like to crush the other guy's ego. We all know what that's come from. We all know where that derives from or um, originates from. C, I'm not good at anything else. Okay, number nine. So, the answers for 9 is, the first one, we don't have to repeat what that was, is 0, A. B is 2, which is, um, like to crush the guy's ego. And C is 1. Okay, and as mentioned, I did know who said that. Um, Bobby Fisher um, is clearly mentioned here. Uh, A misses the point completely it's nothing about that c is far more on the right lines which b has been attributed to bobby fisher or to fisher and number 10 what would you do if chess had never been invented a invent it b play backgammon c curl curl up and die and the answer is a two you get two for playing backgammon Oh, sorry. A, inventor. Sorry. I, I was wrong with the numbers and the letters around the wrong way. B is zero, which is play backgammon. Who wants to play a backgammon? And C, one. Now, C is in, um, curl up and die. You only get one point for that. Necessity is the mother of invention. Now, you might have um, actually scored yourself. So... If you want to, you can have a bit of fun. If you scored 25 or more points, you are almost certainly cheated. But even if you did not, you could have a great future as a chess player. I don't score very well. Um, 15 to 24 points indicates great promise, but you perhaps lack the self-confidence necessary to succeed at the highest levels. Try to cultivate a little more aggressive, more arrogance, sorry, a little more arrogance. Banish those nice features from your character. 
screw your pieces down and snarl at your opponents. With practice you can provide intimidating opposition. Where was that masked man? Uh, with practice you can provide intimidating opposition to anyone. Now 7 to 14 is really not good enough is it old chap? Your character lags far behind that ideal a chess master should be aiming for. You will certainly find that if you continue playing chess it will be necessary to make good moves from time to time just to compensate for this deficit in natural ability. An arduous road to success but quite essential in your case I am afraid. Now 1 to 6 is just abysmal. Okay. Have you learnt nothing at all from this book? I know you haven't read it. Well, you might have. I really cannot understand why I spend hours and hours working to try to teach things to such unreceptive readers. If it were not for the royalties, I doubt whether I would bother at all. Your lack of attention has been quite deplorable and you do not really deserve any advice, but if I had to give any, I suppose I would be forced to recommend chess journalism as the only way out. See, I don't even want to say the word chess journalism. So anyway, that's um, the test from the good old book, How to Cheat at Chess. Special now over from David Wiegener in the deep south of the world, New Zealand, and as the, the wizard would say, down, yo, we're at the top of the world, New Zealand, and we're at the top of the world. Okay, that's all. Thank you, folks.